Okay, we're continuing our series on Python 3. Uh, this is a series I'm putting out a uh, new video every Wednesday. There should be an annotation on the screen to the full playlist. Um, today we're going to be looking at while loops. So I'm in the interpreter here, uh, interactive interpreter for Python 3. And uh, I'll show you. I'll type in Python 3 so you can see what version I'm running here. Um, and today we're going to be looking at while loops. Uh, if you've done any type of program before, you consider different. You 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 consider you know about different types of loops, uh, and you, I'm sure you know about while loops. So, um, and again, just like we were talked about in previous videos, uh, Python does not use um, braces or brackets or anything to indicate like where a loop begins or ends. Uh, the statement is indicated by indentation, and it's important that the indentations are properly indented. This is great for keeping your code clean. It kind of forces you to indent when you're supposed to and keep the code looking nice. can be kind of a pain, but if you're trying to copy and paste code from an example website or something, in some cases it can throw off the, uh, the indentation depending on whether that person used tabs or spaces. And so, but that's a whole other story. But just to, know, just to let you know, that's how it knows where uh, a statement begins and ends because uh, people come to Python from other languages and they get confused on how does it know when the statement is over and it's because of the indentation being done. Anyway, we'll create a variable, we'll call it x and we'll set x equal to 0. So now x equals 0, I can hit x and it says x and it is a integer, it is not a string as you can see there's no quotations around it. And now I can type in while I can say x and I'll say is less than 10, then colon. So whatever is in this loop, every line that's indented uh, after this statement is going to loop as long as x is less than 10. So what we can do here is we can now say uh, print x, oops, x, which will print x to the screen. And then we can say x equals x plus one, and we'll talk about another way to do that here in a moment. Um, so we'll hit enter, and now we're on a new line. If I don't indent and hit enter again, it knows we're done with this loop and it's going to actually run it. So here we go, and we get zero, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and it stops at nine because we say to stop when nine is less than 10. So at that point, it already equals 10. Now, if you want to go from one to 10, you know, there's different ways you can do it. I could uh, start x at zero. I can say uh, x equals one and set x equal to one. And then I can go, by the way, I'm hitting up arrow to go back through previous commands here. And I can say, well, x is less than 11. So here we're starting at one and going until we hit 11. So if I print it out, I can say x plus x equals x plus one. So this is taking whatever x equals and adding one to it. As I said, there's another way to do that as well. It's actually a little shorter, but for right now, just to keep it simple for beginners, we'll do that. So x at this point equals 1. It prints 1, and then it says, okay, x plus 1, which x is 1, so that would be 2. It does loop again. It prints 2, and then it goes 2 plus 1 and sets x equals that, which would be 3. So we'll hit enter here, enter again. It runs it, and now we get 1 through 10. But uh, as I said, we started at 1, and we went through to 11. So that's one way to do that. Another way you could do that, uh, and just to get you thinking in this way of, of numbers and, you know, greater than, you can do greater than, you can do less than, you can do greater than or equal to, and we'll get into all that momentarily. Uh, but I can say x is equal to zero. And up here, we printed the number, we printed the value of x, and then we did the math. Well, it's important to think when you're programming, the order of stuff does make a difference. I can say x equals x plus 1, and, I, and then I can say print. So this is looks the same as before. Oh, and I meant to set that to greater than or less than 10, because we're actually going to go through 11 now. Um, but putting the print before the value change makes a huge difference because now you're printing what the value of x is after you've added 1 to it, not before. So we're never going to see 1 or 0 because we start at 0, but before we print it, we've already added 1 to it. So we went 1 through 11. 
And uh, if we do that again, we we'll again set x to 0, and we'll set this is less than 10, and we'll say add it and then print it. Now we get 1 through 10. And again, because once x equals 10, it's not going to loop this anymore. So that's why the first time where x was after, or the value change was after the print, um, we did not see 10. We only went to 9. Doing it the other way around, it prints it after it's changed, and then it checks it. So, I mean, this is very important and can get confusing in some situations if you don't get your mind in that mindset. Um, and, of course, as I was saying, you could also do uh, is less than. So we can go the other way around. We can set x equal to 10. And we can say while x is uh, less than 10, or greater than 10, or let's go greater than 0. So while x is greater than 0, we'll say x tab x. Oh, I hit caps lock instead of tab. That's why. Oop. I'm like, why is it making a big x? OK, so x equals x minus 1. So this time we're subtracting from x each time. So x equals 10, and then it'll be 9, uh, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, all the way down to 0. And again, since we're printing after we do the math, after we've reset the value of x, you can see we don't see 10 and we go to 0. If we were to do the same exact thing again, but change the order of the stuff in the loop and do print and then change the value, well, now we're going to get 10 through 1. So again, the order makes a big difference. Now, you can also um, set instead of uh, a greater than or less than, we can also say um, once it's not equal to something. Okay, so I could say uh, let's make x equal uh, 1, and I'll say while x equals 1. Oops. Oh, sorry. It should be while x. I'm going to say while x does not equal 1 is what I meant for this example. So it's going to do this as long as x equals 1, which in this particular case is just going to be one loop. We'll say uh, print x, and then we'll say x equals x plus 1. And when we run that, uh, we got nothing out on the screen. Oh, let's let me rethink my example. Let's make x equal to 5. I'm getting examples mixed up in my head. And then I'll say while x does not equal 1. And then I'll say uh, print x. And then I'll say x uh, equals x minus 1. I'll run that. And you see it went 5, 4, 3, 2. And it stopped at 1 because it went, oh, x now equals 1. And we're only running this loop while x does not equal 1. So um, here's an example. And this example is for example use only. You never really want to do this for, well, you know, my example was going to be uh, a password, which you would never want to do this this way. But maybe we'll do a question instead. So what we'll do here is we're going to do a while loop that asks a question and continues to loop until the correct answer is entered. Um, so we can go um, while, well, first we have to set our answer. So we'll say answer equals, and here we're just going to go string like that, which is just going to create an empty string. We could also do quotations with nothing inside them. It's just two ways of doing the same thing. I don't know if there's any benefit of one over the other other than doing something like th this would be a little bit shorter by a few characters. But we're going to do this. So if we type answer now and hit enter, oh, and if we spell things right, it's going to give us an empty string. So it's empty now. So now that that equals that, we're going to say while, and we'll give it the variable of answer, and we're going to say uh, does not equal, and then we're going to give it the answer to the question, and we'll say Chris, colon, and then we're going to start our loop, and we're going to say answer, 
equals input. And as you remember, this is going to be input from the user. And I'll say, what is my name? OK. And uh, at this point, I can hit Enter. And it's going to say, what is my name? And if I type in Bob, it doesn't work. Uh, I can type in Tony, and it doesn't work. But if I type in Chris, it finishes out of the loop. And we'll get more into this. We're actually going to work on while loops a little more next week. Um, but we're going to say, again, the same loop. I'm going to say, what is my name? And again, I can go, oh, sorry, we got to change the value of uh, answer back to a blank string. And now we're going to say, while answer does not equal Chris, we're going to say, what is my name? And I'm going to say, Bob, Tony. I'm going to type Chris, and you also didn't exit out of the loop that time, because this is case sensitive. Uh, so here I have a lowercase k, and here I have an uppercase k, two different things. I'm going to say Chris, and with lowercase k, and it goes through. So that's the end of this tutorial, but we're going to look at more detail of while loops next week, uh, and get into a few other things with them. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this tutorial. I hope you come back next week if you're watching these as I put them out, so next Wednesday. Uh, if you're watching this at a future date, there should already be an annotation on the screen leading to a playlist of um, the full playlist. So I thank you for watching. Please visit my site, filmsbychris.com. That's Chris with the K, and I hope that you have a great day.